Today will be part 15 to the series scriptures often ignored and today we're going to be talking about the marriage supper of the lamb or Matthew chapter 25 verses 1 through 13 because this scripture many people see this passage and they see this parable but some people still are confused or don't really know what it really means or what it's really talking about so hopefully today we'll get some clarification and will help you understand better what this parable is really talking about because remember many scriptures are in parables and it takes a ton to really grasp and understand what Yahuwah is telling us and what Yahusha is trying to show us. So here we are in Matit Yahu or Matthew chapter 25 and it says, Then shall the kingdom of Shamayim or heaven be likened unto ten virgins which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. Okay, five of them were wise and five were foolish. So we see that in this parable so far there were ten virgins, five were wise and five were foolish when it came to meet the bridegroom and it says they that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them but the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps while the bridegroom tarried they all slumbered and slept okay and at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. Then all the virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. But the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there be not enough for us and you, but go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came and they that were ready listen to that they that were ready went in with him to the marriage and the door was shut afterward came also the other virgins saying master master open to us but he answered and said verily I say unto you I know you not watch therefore for you know neither the day nor the hour wherein the son of man cometh and of course this is Yahusha talking in a parable of the ten virgins now, if you're new to this channel, then you'd understand that I use the set-apart restored Hebrew names for our creator, Yahuwah, and his true son, the Messiah, Yahusha. Because if scripture is a Hebrew book and scripture was written in Hebrew, it would only make sense to use their Hebrew names. It was only common sense. But let's keep going. So this passage, we see that, what, there were ten virgins, five of them were wise, and they trimmed their lamps and had the extra oil, and the other five were foolish. Now, I know you probably have some questions. Well, first of all, who are these virgins? Who are these virgins talking about? Who, what's the lamp and what's the extra oil that these virgins took and who is the bridegroom? So we're going to uncover that and more to come. And we're going to be reading precept upon precept just to see what scripture says that these things are so you can get a better understanding. And so now we're going to tackle the question, well, what is that extra oil or that extra oil that the five wise virgins took? What oil is it talking about in the scripture? Now first we're going to be covering and tackling what that extra oil is according to scripture and then we're going to be talking about who the virgins are and who the bridegroom is. Okay, so now I'm here at Psalms chapter 119 and we're going to be, or Tahalim chapter 119, and we're going to be in verse 105 because it tells us what this extra oil is and you can find a lot of this all in the writings and the songs all throughout David and Solomon, they all talk about it, or Dawid and Shaluma. But here I am in verse 105, and it says, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Let's read that again. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Thy word. So the word of Yahuwah is a lamp. Well, what word is he talking about? Let's keep going. Now we're going to go to Proverbs chapter 6 verses 23 because that also tells us some interesting things as well. What does it say? It says, for the commandment is a lamp. Oh, so we see the word lamp again. And the law is light. And reproofs of instruction are the way of life. Let's read that again. Proverbs chapter 6, verses 23. Or Mishlai chapter 6, verses 23. For the commandment is a lamp. 
and the law is light, and reproofs of instruction are the way of life. Well, which commandment is it talking about? Which law is it talking about? You're going to see in just a second. We're back here in Psalm 119, verses 130, and it says here, it says, The entrance of thy words giveth light. It giveth understanding unto the simple. So the entrance of thy words giveth light. So it says, according to the song here, it says what? The entrance of the words giveth light. Which words? The words words of Yahuwah. So the word of Yahuwah is light. Okay, now what exactly is his word? We're going to keep going. So now we're here in Psalm or Tahalim chapter 19, and we're going to be reading from verse 8. It says, the statutes of Yahuwah are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of Yahuwah is pure, enlightening the eyes. Now, I'm going to read that a little earlier. I'm going to start at verse 7. It says, the law of Yahuwah is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of Yahuwah is sure, making wise the simple. The statutes of Yahuwah are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of Yahuwah is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of Yahuwah is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of Yahuwah who are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is thy servant warned, and in keeping of them there is great reward. So we see here where that what what is it? It says the statutes of Yahuwah are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of Yahuwah is pure, enlightening the eye. So where's that light we see again? The commandment of Yahuwah. That is the light. That is that extra oil that it's talking about. The Torah, keeping the law. And I'm going to explain that more as we go along. We are in Psalm or Tahalim chapter 36 and we're going to be reading from verse nine because it says in here it says for with thee is the fountain of light and thy light shall we see light so in whose light are we going to see light in the light of Yahuwah. And as we saw in other precepts like Psalm chapter 119 verses 105 and 130 and even Proverbs chapter 6 verses 23, we see that the commandment is light. His word is light. His word is a lamp unto us as spoken of in Psalm chapter 119 verses 105. So this can give us pure understanding and help us see that the five wise virgins, the extra oil that they had and have is the the Torah is the commandment, is the word of Yahuwah. That's what it's talking about when it says the word of Yahuwah is the Torah. His Torah, meaning the law, statutes, and commandments that are spoken of in the first five books of Scripture, the Mosaic Law. Now, of course, you get people who say, oh, well, we don't have to keep the law anymore, even though Matthew chapter 5, verses 17 through 20, and John chapter 14, verses 15 tell you even the Messiah says to keep the commandments. Now, yes, he came to to fulfill the law. That is true. However, we still need to keep the law to the best of our abilities. He did not come here so that we, so that we can say, oh, well, he came so we don't have to, we don't have to follow the Torah anymore. No, that is pure blasphemy. And I know that's what Christianity has taught you. And I know that's what the man of lawlessness has taught you, according to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. But now it's time to break through that stronghold and break through these web of lies so that you can see the truth, so that you can be wise and trim your lamp and have that extra oil and not be one of those five foolish virgins who did not trim their lamps and do not bring their extra oil with them, which is the Torah. Not only that, but also the true Messiah, Yahusha, and accepting him into our hearts as our Passover lamb. That is also what you need and what is needed in order to meet the bridegroom because he is the bridegroom. And now we're going to find out, well, okay, well, who just who exactly are the virgins? So to recap, we see in scripture, and I've just read precept upon precept, line upon line, that what the extra oil that the virgins had, that the five wise virgins had, is the Torah, as well as accepting Yahusha, their blood Passover lamb sacrifice, 
into their hearts. That is what they needed. And I know many people are celebrating the Passover today, actually, or around this time. In fact, I celebrated it myself three weeks ago. I know some people who celebrated it as early as March, and even some people who celebrated it a couple of days ago. Now, of course, Yahuwah will, will be the one to right every wrong and restore everything as according to Zephaniah or Tzaphan Yahu chapter three. So we don't so we don't have to get caught up in the days and the calendars as much. But as long as you're observing the laws and doing the feast days, that is a plus and that is really, really good. And I'm sure Yahuwah will continue to Baruch you as you continue to follow his law. So we see in scripture that the law is what the law is, that extra oil that the five wise virgins already had with them so that when they met their bridegroom, which is Yahusha, they were ready to get into the kingdom. And those who were foolish did not have the law or did not have Torah or those who say, oh, the Torah is done away with or those who say, oh, we don't have to follow the law. Well, they were the ones busy searching. And then, of course, they missed the mark because just as Yahusha has told us, watch and be ready. So now we're going to go over Yaram Yahu or Jeremiah chapter 31 to see just who these virgins are because it says the 10 virgins. So who are these virgins? Who are the wise virgins and who are the foolish virgins? And Jeremiah chapter 31 actually tells us who they are. So we're going to start and we're going to read, we're going to read most of it, not all of it, but I just want you to see who the virgins really are. And so here we are. At the same time, saith Yahuwah, will I be the Allahim, that's another translation of God in the Hebrew is Allahim, of all the families of Yashra'al or Israel, and they shall be my people. Thus saith Yahuwah, the people which were left of the sword found grace in the wilderness, even Yashra'al or Israel, when I went to cause him to rest. Yahuwah hath appeared of old unto me, saying, Yea, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness have I drawn thee. Again will I build thee. Oh, so again we see that he will build us, and thou shalt be built, O virgin of Yashra all, virgin of Yashra all. Thou shalt again be adorned with my, thy tabrets, and shalt go forth in the dances of them that make Mary, thou shalt plant, uh, thou shalt yet plant vines upon the mountains of Samaria, Salakia. The planters shall plant and shall eat them as common things. For there shall be a day that the watchmen upon the Mount Ephraim shall cry, Arise ye, and let us go up to Zion unto Yahuwah our Allahim. And see, it says, Again will I build thee. Now, what's also interesting is when you look at the Hebrew for our name, for Yahuwah, you see that the Hebrew, the Yod He Vav He, what you see is that it means what? Behold a hand, behold a nail. Very powerful indeed, because he is, is what builds us. His foundation is what builds us, and he will build Yashra all again. So we see who are the virgins, the virgins of Yashra all. But let's keep going. It says, For thus saith Yahuwah, sing with gladness for Yahu Cub or Jacob, and shout among the chief of the nations, publish ye Praise ye and say, O Yahuwah, save thy people, the remnant of Yashra all. So who the virgins of Yashra all? Behold, I will bring them from the north country and gather them from the coasts of the earth. And with them, the blind and the lame, the woman with child and her that travaileth with child together, a great company shall return thither. They shall come with weeping and with supplications will I lead them. I will cause them to walk by the rivers of waters in a straight way wherein they shall not stumble for I I am a father to Yashra all and Ephraim is my firstborn. So Yahuwah is a father to Yashra all. Hear the word of Yahuwah, O ye nations, and declare it in the isles afar off, and say, He that scattereth Yashra all will gather him and keep him as a shepherd doth his flock. For Yahuwah hath redeemed Yahu Cub or Jacob, and ransomed him from the hand of him that was stronger than he. That's talking about captivity and slavery, but let's keep going. Therefore they shall come and sing in the height of Zion, and shall flow together to the goodness of Yahuwah for wheat and for wine and for oil and for the young of the flock and of the herd, and their soul shall be as a watered garden, and they shall not sorrow any more at all. Then shall the virgin rejoice in the dance, both young men and old together, for I will turn their mourning into joy, and will comfort them and make them rejoice 
from their sorrow. So who will rejoice? The virgin, the same virgin that's talked about in Matthew chapter 25, the parable of the 10 virgins. So we see that who is the virgin? Yashra'al or Israel. And in this context, it's talking about, as we'll see in Revelation chapter 14, it's talking about natural Israel, those who have been scattered. It's talking about who the 12 tribes of Yashra'al. Now that doesn't mean that those who are grafted into Yahusha, they will be saved, of course, but this is specifically talking about the 144,000. So let's get that through our heads. But it goes on to say, uh, verse 16, Thus saith Yahuwah, refrain thy voice from weeping and thine eyes from tears, for thy work shall be rewarded, saith Yahuwah, and they shall come again from the land of the enemy, which we see is going on even as we speak today. So it goes on to say, Is Aphraim my dear son? Is he a pleasant child? For since I spake against him, I do earnestly remember him still. Therefore my bowels are troubled for him. I will surely have mercy upon him, saith Yahuwah. It goes on to say, Set thee up waymarks, make thee high heaps, set thy heart toward the highway, even the way which thou went. Turn again, O virgin of Israel, or Yashra'al, turn again to these thy cities. Is it talking about the Israel you see in, in Israel today? Is it talking about the fake 1948 fraudulent Israel? No, it is not. But let's keep going. How long wilt thou go about, O thou backsliding daughter? For Yahuwah hath created a new thing in the earth. A woman shall compass a man. Thus saith Yahuwah of hosts, the Elohim of Yashra all. As yet they shall use this speech in the land of Yahudah, or Judah, and in the cities thereof, when I shall bring again their captivity. Yahuwah, Baruch thee, O habitation of justice, and mountain of set apartness or holiness. And it goes on to say, in verse 27, Behold, the days come, saith Yahuwah, that I will sow the house of Yashra all in the house of Yahudah with the seed of man and with the seed of beast. And it shall come to pass that like as I have watched over them to pluck up and to break down and to throw down and to destroy and to afflict, what does he say? So will I watch over them to build and to plant, saith Yahuwah. And notice how we see here again to build. Remember, that's what his name means. Behold a hand, behold a nail. Interesting indeed. I'm telling you, it, we, real revelation. But let's keep going. In those days they shall say no more. The fathers have eaten a sour grape and the children's teeth are set on edge. But everyone shall die for his own iniquity. Every man that eateth the sour grape, his teeth shall be set on edge. This is another parable. Now it says, Behold, the days come, saith Yahuwah, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Yashra all, or Israel, and with the house of Yahuda or Judah. And Judah is who so called African Americans. Let's keep going. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Mitzrayim or Egypt, which my covenant they break. Although I was a husband unto them, saith Yahuwah. Did you hear that? Who was he a husband unto? Yashra all, Yahudai, Israel. But then he says, but this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. Israel or house of Yashra all after those days say Yahuwah I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts and will be their Allahim and they shall be my people and another way to look at that is the Ruach HaKadosh or the what you may call the Holy Spirit and how he writes his law in our hearts if we accept it so we see here based on precept upon precept that who is the virgins that it's talking about in Matthew 25 the 10 virgins it's talking about Yashra all the house of Israel and we're going to see that too in Revelation chapter 14 like I said, I hope this is making better sense, and I hope this is making sense with the scriptures as well, because I am reading precept upon precept, as talked about in the book of Isaiah. But here I am in Revelation chapter 14, and it talks about the virgins once again in this scripture too. It says, And I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on Mount Zion, and with him a hundred and forty-four thousand. So hundred and forty-four thousand, twelve thousand from each of the twelve tribes of Israel, having his father's 
name written in their foreheads. And I heard a voice from Shamayim or heaven as the voice of many waters and as the voice of a great thunder. And I heard the voice of harpers harping with their harps. And they sung as it were a new song before the throne and before the four beasts and the elders. And no man could learn that song but the hundred and forty-four thousand which were redeemed from the earth. These are they which were not defiled with women for who? Who are they? They are virgins. These are they which what follow the lamb whithersoever he goeth. These were redeemed from among men being the first fruits unto Yahuwah Elohim and to the lamb. So we see first fruits here as well. And it also says so we see the virgins. Who are the virgins? Those who follow the lamb wherever they go, wherever he goeth. And we see 144,000 standing with him, which represents who? Yashra all or Israel, the 12,000 from each of the tribes of Israel. I hope this is making more sense. Now, of course, though for those who are not part of this, who are not part of the 144,000, they can still be grafted in through Yahusha HaMashiach, and they will be saved and redeemed. But this is specifically talking about the 144,000 when it's talking about the parable of the 10 virgins. And I'm going to prove to you that's what it's talking about. And I'm also going to prove to you that, yes, the New Testament is real. And Yahuwah willing, I'm going to be doing a video on this in detail later on this week or if not this week, definitely next week, that talks about our Messiah and how he is even in the Old Testament. And I'm going to show you just what I'm talking about. Now here I am in the Torah and we're here in Baikra or Leviticus chapter 21 and I'm going to be reading from you verses 13 through 14. Now this chapter has to do with the Levitical priesthood and what the priests had to do and I'm going to tell you the Torah is or what the commandments say in the Torah. So here we're going to be reading from verses 13 and 14 and it says and he shall take and this is talking about the high priest by the way it says he shall take a wife in her virginity a widow or a divorced woman or profane or a harlot, these shall he not take, but he shall take a virgin of his own people to wife. Neither shall he profane his seed among his people, for I, Yahuwah, do sanctify him. So what the high priest, so what the high priest may only marry a virgin. Very interesting and, and, and suspicious indeed, because what you're about to see is, well, who is the high priest today in the New Testament or the renewed covenant? You're going to see exactly how this relates to the Messiah and to Yashra all. Remember, keep that commandment in your mind. According to the Torah, a high priest may only marry a virgin. With that in mind, we're going to see who the high priest is and who the virgin is. Now we see the same precept in Ezekiel or Yaakov's call chapter 44 in verses 22. And I'm going to go there to show you exactly what I'm talking about. I'm going to start at verses 20 through 23. Now it's talking about, of course, what the priesthood being restored and the laws regarding the priesthood back then. It says, neither shall they shave their heads nor suffer their locks to grow long. They shall only pull their heads. That's how you know they were black back then because only black people have locks. Let's keep going. Neither shall any priests drink wine when they enter into the inner court. So it's talking about the priests. Now let's read verse 22. Neither shall they take their take for their wives a widow nor her that is put away, but they shall take the maidens of the seed of the house of Yashra all, or a widow that had a priest before, and they shall teach my people the what the difference between the, the set apart or holy and profane, and cause them to discern between the unclean and the clean. I hope you are listening to this. So so what is this talking about here? What? Neither shall they take for their wives a widow, nor her that is put away, but they shall take the maidens of the seed of the house of Yashra all, or a widow that had a priest before. Now you may be wondering, well, where does the Messiah and Yashra all fits into this? Because this is another precept to Leviticus chapter 21, verses 13 and 14, the commandment that says, what? The high priests may only marry a virgin. Well, does the New Testament say that Yahusha is a high priest? Let's find out.
Here I am in Hebrews chapter 4, and I'm going to be reading from verse 14 so we can see what scripture says who the high priest really is in the new in the renewed covenant, or what you may call the New Testament. It says, seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the Shamayim or heavens, and of course this version says Jesus, but really it should say Yahusha, the restored Hebrew name, Yahusha, the son of Elohim, Yahuwah, let us hold fast our pro profession. Wow, that's very interesting because it says a high priest may only marry a virgin. We just identified earlier who the virgin is. Who's the virgin? Yashra all or Israel. So we already identified that. And who's the high priest? Yahusha, the bridegroom, as spoken of in Matthew chapter 25. So we see that that's exactly what that's talking about. So Yahusha, when he returns for his for his bride, who's his bride? Yashra all and his brothers and sisters that are in him and have been grafted in and through him but how can you be grafted in if you're a so-called called gentile and if you are of yashra all or so-called black what can you do in order to get in let's look at scripture to find out I'm back in Matthew or Matit Yahu chapter 12 and we're going to be reading from verses 46 through 50 because we need to see exactly how we can inherit the kingdom of Yahuwah and he's of course talking in parable again but it says while he yet talked to the people behold his mother and his brethren stood without or outside desiring to speak with him then one said unto him behold thy mother and thy brethren stand outside desiring to speak with you but he answered and said unto him that told him who is my mother and who are my brethren? This is Yahusha speaking. Yahusha asks, who is my mother? Who is my brethren? And he stretched forth his hand toward his Talmudim or disciples and said, behold, my mother and my brethren. And what does this verse say? Verse 50, whosoever shall do the will of my father, which is in Shamayim or heaven, the same is my brother and sister and mother. So to be brothers and sisters of Yahusha, the real Messiah, you have to be doing the will of the Father. And what's the will of the Father? As we just talked about in scripture earlier, following the law, statutes, and commandments, the Torah. Because remember, according to Psalm chapter 119, verses 105, the Torah, Yahuwah's word, the word of Yahuwah is the light and is that extra lamp or the extra oil that you need in order to meet the bride, in order to meet the bride, the groom himself, Salakia. That is what is needed. And the question is, are you, the, are you a wise virgin or are you a foolish virgin? And for those who are being grafted in to through Yahusha, are you wise or are you foolish? Are you following the Torah, learning to follow the law, statutes, and commandments? Or are you still sitting there saying, oh, we don't need to follow the law. It was done away with because that's what Christianity teaches. Oh, no, we don't need to follow this. Oh, we can do whatever we want and eat whatever we want, even though the law specifically forbids you from eating pork and shellfish like, lo like lobster, crab, and shrimp, and other disgusting foods. Which one are you? I'm going to leave these links below and these scriptures below. Hopefully this has been very helpful to you. Like I said, we just identified who the virgins are. The virgins are Yashra all, the 144,000. Who are The oil and the extra oil that they had, the wise ones had is the Torah or the law. And we see in scripture that a high priest may only marry a virgin. Well, we already established who the virgin is. That's Yashra all. And the high priest is, of course, Yahusha, our Mashiach. So we see that doing the will and work of Yahuwah, only then can we be brothers and sisters in Yahusha, grafted in through Yahusha, back into Yashra all or Israel, because Yashra all is those who are following the law, statutes, and commandments, those who are following Torah. Then, only then can you inherit the kingdom of Shamayim. Hopefully this has been helpful to you. I'll leave the links below. If you have any questions, please feel free to email me. This is Truth Unveiled. Shalom.